have you here today. If this is your first time joining us, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below because you don't want to miss out on any of the Southern Yankee DIY projects, room renovations, or budget savvy home decor. Today we've got something extra special planned for y'all. We teamed up with a bunch of our extremely talented YouTube friends to bring y'all a nailed it or failed it challenge. We all took something that already exists from a beautiful designer that we love, but maybe it's a little bit too pricey, and we decided to recreate it. So you're going to find out if we either nailed it or failed it. And y'all, let me just be honest, I forgot about this challenge until um, like an hour ago. So my nailed it or failed it is for real. I've got an hour to pull this thing off, and I think you're going to absolutely love it. I'm going to give my go at a DIY wooden lantern for the outside. So hopefully it turns out great. We'll see if we nailed it or failed it. Either way, check out my friends below. I'm going to go ahead and tag all of their nailed it or failed it and let me know what you think and which one you love best. Here's the inspiration, a outdoor wooden lantern from Home Depot. The first thing I'm going to do is measure and mark all of my two by two pieces. I want the entire um, lantern to be about two feet, so I'm going to do each leg at 21 inches. I'm going to use the original leg to mark um, the legs after that so that they're all the same size and it'll go nice and smooth. My next step is to go ahead and figure out what size I want the base to be. So I'm going to stand up the legs and then use this little hurricane jar as kind of like a standard of measurement because I want um, these little hurricane jars to maybe go inside them or maybe just some tall white candles. I'm not sure yet, but I want to make sure that whatever I use will go in and out of the lantern easily. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my base. Um, I'm going to have two of these pieces the same exact length because we're going to have a base on the bottom and then a little topper on top. So they both need to be the same size. Because the legs are so tall, it is a little bit awkward to figure out how exactly we're going to attach them. So this is what I found to be the easiest way. I'm going to use a little bit of Elmer's wood glue and place each of my four legs onto my base. Then once they're nice and secure, you're going to see what I'm going to do next. I just used the square as my guide for these, so I'm just gonna place the legs all around the four corners of the square. That made it nice and easy and no measuring. Before I attach the top piece, I want to get a little small piece where my handle is going to fit through. So I just want something small on top that's going to be a fun little detail for the hook to go through. Once my little detail piece was cut, I went ahead and started to figure out where my little hole is going to be for my handle to attach to. I'm gonna clamp it down on my work surface and then drill two holes for the little handle to go through, which is actually a plastic shower curtain ring. I'm gonna show y'all in a minute. 
First, I'm gonna drill a pilot hole with a smaller bit, um, just so it's easier when I go back through with my larger bit that's the actual size of the handle. Once my hole is drilled, it's time to go ahead and attach the little detail piece to the top. I'm just gonna do this with some wood glue and then maybe later I'll go back and use some small finishing nails just to secure it extra good. I definitely recommend um, wiping off all of your excess glue because if you plan on staining the project, stain hates glue. So definitely get rid of it. Um, if you're painting, it's a little bit less of trouble, but it's just better to just wipe it off. Now it's time to go ahead and attach the legs to the top. So all I did was um, flip it over and I'm going to use some longer nails, two inch nails, to attach each of my four pieces to the top. Use a level to make sure that your legs are straight and even. Once the top was attached, I went ahead and moved on to the bottom. I did this the same way using three nails per leg. Now, in hindsight, I should have done the bottom first because now that top has that nice little finishing piece and it's making it a little bit wobbly, but it really wasn't a big deal. But for you, I definitely recommend um, starting with the bottom so that you don't have that little bit of wobble. Now that my nails are all in and my little lantern is secure, I'm gonna go ahead and use this Min Wax Stainable Wood Filler. Um, not all wood fillers are stainable, so make sure that it says stainable if you plan on staining your project. I really like this one from Min Wax. It's kind of sandy feeling, and you can't even tell um, once your project is stained that there were ever holes there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover and fill all of my little holes and any little cracks or imperfections in the wood. Once the wood filler is dry, you can go ahead and sand it down. I sand down any rough edges on the wood also, um, but mainly just sanded the excess wood filler. Now it's time to go ahead and stain your project. I'm going to use a Minwax stain called Classic Gray. It's number 271. I love this Classic Gray stain. I want it to kind of have a weathered look, so I think that this, this stain is gonna be perfect for that. Now the two by twos are treated wood, so we're gonna see how they take to the stain. I know that the rest of the wood will be fine, but the treated wood um, may need two coats. We'll just have to wait it out and see. I always recommend wearing gloves when you're staining just so that your hands don't look all icky for three days afterwards. Mm -hmm. 
Once your lantern is dry from either your paint or your stain, we're gonna go ahead and attach the handles. I used these little plastic shower curtain rings that I get from the dollar store and just painted them black. These are gonna be perfect because the lanterns are not gonna be held up by this handle. They're gonna be either on the floor or on a table. So there's not gonna be really any weight on these handles. I'm gonna go ahead and just um, insert it into the hole that we made earlier with the drill and go ahead and hot glue it so it's nice and secure. That's it y'all, what do you think? Did we nail it or fail it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm super happy with how they turned out. I think that they are going to look beautiful on our newly made over patio. Don't forget to check out all of my friends' projects. I'll go ahead and link the playlist below and let them know if they nailed it or failed it. Until next time, have a great week y'all.